Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and welcome to the start of a brand new reading vlog. So I've decided to do a weekend reading vlog and hopefully this weekend I will be able to knock out all of the rest of the books on my Summer Fling readathon TBR. I only have four prompts left I'm pretty sure to complete or five I don't remember. <laughs> I wanted to share with y'all some of the books that I hopefully will be reading this weekend and I'm currently reading right now. So the first book that I'm currently reading is Dating My Best Friend by Annie J. Rose. I got this one off of Kenta Unlimited and it's only like 275 pages so it's kind of reading pretty fast. And this is going to fill the prompt for friends to lovers romance. Now I had another book on my TBR for this prompt but I don't know I wasn't really feeling it so I had this one on rent from Kindle Unlimited, so I decided to pick it up. This one is about a woman who had this guy as her best friend all the way from like elementary school to high school. And then a tragedy strikes when he's in high school and he has to move across the country. He never speaks to her ever again, which she is devastated and heartbroken by. And it is many, many, many years later, like over 10 years later, she has gotten married since and her husband has passed away since then. And he has been in the Marines and now suffers from PTSD. And he even has an emotional support dog to help him with his PTSD because he suffers from panic attacks. He waltzes back into town many years later. They're actually also next door neighbors. Um, so there's that dynamic to it. Well, her family lives next door to him. She doesn't. Their family houses are right next door to each other. There we go. And she is like hating on him because she he just like up and left, didn't give her any warning, no word didn't tell her anything and so she's been very hurt by him and doesn't trust him anymore so I'm about 33 percent of the way through it I think I'm on like page 70 something I'm enjoying it so far I really like the PTSD and anxiety rep in there I don't have PTSD in his capacity when it comes to like the Marines and war and stuff like that so I don't have that kind of PTSD so I can't attest if it's valid or accurate or not but I feel like it's done pretty well his panic attack scene is a panic attack <laughs> uh, so uh, beware going into this if you're triggered by people having panic attacks I don't really know if this book is for you I am really enjoying it so far so we'll see how that goes this book isn't for the summer fling readathon but I'm currently reading it and it's Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. I'm buddy reading this with Deja from Deja Soar. I'll link her down below. And um, we decided to really wanted to buddy read this series together again, reread it. And I love this. I spent like so many hours last night like looking at Scarlet and Wolf fan art because I love them. This is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles if you didn't know. And this series are all YA retellings of fairy tales and so this one is a retelling of red riding hood obviously again love this book i've never listened to the audiobook before so i'm really enjoying that around 30 percent of the way through that i also need to finish or read breath of fire by amanda boucher which is my road trip book second book in the kingmaker chronicles haven't read that one yet haven't even started that one yet i think it's a beautiful player by christina lauren i also need to read that one that one's for i think like a steamy one i think that's the steamy one the last one is sweet and clean so if you saw my tbr video you would have seen that i picked bittersweet love by rochelle allers and i got this one off of audible escape and i was really looking forward to this one it's like a romance where this man and this woman get custody of their goddaughters and they end up like falling in love through all of that i was really looking forward to it and i got maybe a couple of hours into the audiobook no one told me or i didn't see a trigger warning for a shooting that is the one thing that i can't really read about in books because I was a victim of one so I don't read books like that so as soon as I heard because I was listening to the audiobook as soon as I heard <laughs> that there was a shooting in this book I immediately turned it off and um I didn't want to read any more of that unfortunately <laughs> I don't mess with any books that have shootings in it that's why I really try to look at trigger warnings and really appreciate when people put trigger warnings in summaries or reviews of their books it really helps me because then i'll know if this book is something i can read or not that was not fun for me <laughs> i was really enjoying it though but i i can't i can't do that i can't do that i didn't want to skip over i just didn't once i 
know that it's in the book, I don't want to read the book, you know? I can't just skip over it. I decided to not read it, so I replaced it with If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson, and this one is obviously a sweet and clean book. This is a young adult book, and it, <laughs> y'all, this book. I'm only like this far of the way into it. It's very short. I'm listening to the audiobook of this, Oh my gosh, the audiobook is fantastic. This is a very short story and it is a modern day retelling of Romeo and Juliet with a black boy and a Jewish girl. And I had no idea that it was a Romeo and Juliet retelling going into it. I read the preface or listened to the preface of this book written by the author and this is a 20 year anniversary edition. So she originally wrote this 20 years ago. And so the preface is for the new edition. It's only maybe like two pages and I have never read a preface that's made me cry before and this one did. Her preface was amazing. It was beautiful. I listened to it like 10 times. I just rewound it, rewound it before I even started the book just to listen to this preface over and over and over again. It was beautiful. Um, it's basically Jacqueline Woodson talking about how she had no idea that this book would reach so many people and touch so many people. I just want to read one little section. I hope that's okay. Towards the end of the preface, 20 years have passed since the publication of this novel. I've met people from all over the country who have met me as adults with their well-worn, many times read copies of this book. Once in Brooklyn, a young Orthodox woman stood before me in tears and said, this is the story of my life. She had fallen in love with a black man and had been sent away from home, never seeing him again. Once in South Dakota, a young white girl handed me her tattered copy of the book and asked me, what can I do to change the world? In Dallas, Texas, a teenage interracial couple told me this book is like a Bible to us. And at a private school in New York City, a group of girls approached me in tears, none of us seemed to say anything at all. I have loved the journey If You Come Softly has taken me on, looking forward to meeting you somewhere on the road. I literally had chills the whole time I was reading that just now. So those are my plans for this weekend. I have some work to do because I got a new job recently and then I got to do homework obviously. I want to get my weekend homework done today hopefully so I don't have to worry about it for the next two days. And then tomorrow I really want to try and wake up early to go to my school's gardens. There's this place my mom has taken me to when she came to visit um, where the campus has like gardens here with beautiful flowers and places to relax and sit. The only issue is it is like 100 degrees every single day and so I would be boiling. So my mom told me it'd probably be best if I went really early in the morning where it's not as hot or late in the afternoon where it's not as hot as well. Not in the middle of the day. I really want to go and take book pictures because my mom has beautiful gardens in her like yard. That's where I would take all of my Instagram pictures, um, which I do not have any of that now because I live in an apartment. So I don't have any of those gardens to take pictures in anymore. So I really wanted to go take a backpack full of books and go take some pictures. Also, sorry, this clip is so long, but I wanted to say I have finally gotten back in my groove with The Legend of Korra. I rewatched all of Avatar The Last Airbender. I rewatched season one of The Legend of Korra and, and I was in the middle of rewatching season two of The Legend of Korra. And I know in one reading vlog, I was saying how I stopped watching it because Korra was annoying me so much. The beginning of season two, Korra kind of sucks. <laughs> like she's so boring and annoying and I didn't like her. I was like, I'm fed up with this Korra and turned her off for like a month and didn't watch any more of it. And so then the other day I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna power through and finally finish this season. So I finished book two. I'm on book three, which I've never seen book three or book four. I think I saw the last episode of book four because I wanted to know what happened but y'all <laughs> I had no idea that like past characters other than Katara show up I started screaming when I saw who was in this season <laughs> anyway if you don't watch Legend of Korra you have no idea what I'm talking about anyways I'm gonna get going to doing some homework and all that jazz and hopefully reading some. Hi guys, it is later in the afternoon. It is around 4.30. If you hear my computer, if you hear a fan running, it's cause I have my video for tomorrow exporting. I finally got a video done <laughs> before. 2 a.m. the day of. <laughs> for the past like three weeks, I finished the video like Saturday at three o'clock in the morning. 
that's not healthy for me um i filmed this one i really wanted to film another one we'll see if that happens yeah that's what i've been doing i just finished editing it um i'm very excited it's fantasy romance recommendations which i love fantasy romance and the video is probably already up for your viewing pleasure so go check it out i have to get a bunch of like uh book pictures ready for editing i have to set up some clips and stuff like that so while i was doing that when i didn't have to listen to anything i listened to more of scarlet i don't remember what page i'm on because i haven't kept up with the physical keeping up with the audio version but um, i'm farther in that audiobook also i just finished book three of the legend of Korra. oh my gosh that last episode of book three literally cried the last scene of book three I can't wait to watch book four because I've only seen the last episode of book four. It's like I know what happens, kind of, and like the person she gets with, yes, <laughs> like, yes. If y'all haven't watched Avatar The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra, what are you doing with your life? Like they're so good. <laughs> I also really wanted to go on eBay and buy the mystery historical romance box. I think we're gonna do it. It's gonna be a birthday present to myself. By the time you're watching this, I think my birthday is in two days, if I'm hoping this gets posted on that day. And people told me that it kind of gets here around a week after you order it. So, um, I really wanna do that. So I'm gonna go on eBay and buy a historical romance mystery box. I'm so excited, but I'm also so nervous because like I've been watching people's videos of them buying historical romance mystery boxes and sometimes they get like duds and then sometimes they get gems and sometimes you don't get any gems i'm just worried i think i'll put in like my preference box that the things i like or hopefully we'll get because i don't even know what i want i kind of want some popular authors i just want some beautiful step backs and i think some lisa claypas because i only have the first three books in the ravenels maybe some johanna lindsay i really want to collect also lindsay sands books um because i have a few of hers and i want more okay i just did it i ordered one I co it costs like $20 for a pack of 20 <laughs> um, and I'm so excited. I just wrote on the little note that um, I'd love some Lisa Kleepus if they have any and then I lo I'd love some like historical romance staples, like author staples if they have any and then I love step backs and floral covers. So. <laughs> It says it'll be here in between September 4th, which is my birthday, to September 16th. So in between there, hopefully it gets here really soon. Yeah, I'm so excited. And it seems like the people I ordered from are like a new one or like a new listing. And I think only like one person has bought from this listing before. So hopefully that means that they'll get it done pretty quick. So, <laughs> so excited. I'm also just so nervous. Hello, I just finished this. <laughs> Please read this book. It's really good and it's also really sad. I, I want to go reread it like right now. I just want to read it all over again. There's so many messages you could take out of this book. I highlighted so many things. Jacqueline Woodson is an amazing writer. Holy crap. She is amazing. I don't know what else to say. I just want to go cry. I just want to go cry because I love it. But I'm also really sad about it. Please read this book. It's very short. I feel like anybody could get anything out of this. I can't for myself speak for the black community because I am not black, obviously. But Jacqueline Woodson put in her like forward message how many people have connected to this story who are black. So I would assume if you are, I feel like this would be a good book for you. Um, but then again, don't count me on that. I am not black. But this was this is a known voices book. So and I feel like if you're white, you could get something out of this too. The way that people were judging them literally made me want to throw up. I hate it. 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 Anyway, um, I'm gonna go cry or something. I don't know. I will probably talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Hi guys, it's actually a couple days later. It's actually Monday. The weekend has already passed. I filmed this clip on Saturday, but I was really emotional in it and I feel like I cry too often on camera. <laughs> for y'all to like need to see that anymore and i have more of my thoughts together and i'm less emotional now um so some things have happened since i last updated you i woke up on saturday morning at 
5 o'clock in the morning to my sister in horrible pain calling me um, that she needed help, that she needed medicine um, because uh, she tested positive for the coronavirus. Her test results came back like early, early, early that morning. She was coughing nonstop, like she couldn't breathe. So I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning, drove to the store for her for, at 5.30 in the morning, bought her medicine food I even brought some food for my I even bought some food for myself so that I could cook meals for her and go and put them down at her doorstep to her apartment and so she didn't have to worry about all that stuff we don't live in the same complex but she's maybe a 10 minute walk or a two minute drive away from me I did that until 7 30 in the morning got her some breakfast chick-fil-a too and then crashed until 12 in the afternoon and then i woke up to my roommate texting me in our group chat and telling me that she tested positive <laughs> and i was around her on or, and like all week i was around her in like the kitchen and stuff so i've been isolating in my room we've all been isolating in each other's rooms i do not have any symptoms one of my roommates already got tested and it's negative um but my roommate who does have it is staying isolated in her room and we're doing the best we can to like help her in any way that she needs and she's perfectly fine she's not like my sister and has really really severe symptoms if she did we'd obviously like do whatever we can to help make her feel comfortable but anyway needless to say it's been a crazy couple of days when i got that news i was really obviously scared because um i know that i'm not an asymptomatic person I like a really 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 weak immune system because of my autoimmune disorder so um we know that if i were to get it like I didn't know if I had it because I would be like as sick as my sister basically or even worse so I am not getting tested until I show symptoms because my sister told me how the free testing process is at the university here and you get tested in groups of people and you have to like cough into your elbow all in the same room and then they swab you I could easily get it there whereas I could just stay in my room and I know if I have it or not so that's what I've been doing I emailed all my professors and told them I wouldn't be in my in-class it I wouldn't be in class in person uh, this whole week as I told y'all my birthday is next week and I was planning on going home Thursday and staying until Sunday and I had so many plans like not like big plans like I can't go do stuff but like I was still looking forward to spending time with my family and my pets because <laughs> my pets are my life we have like seven now we just rescued a kitten and he's literally getting fixed as we speak I was looking forward to like eating a really good meal of one of my favorite meals and like having sweets on my birthday and I really wanted to go to like some bookstores safely and like find like hidden gems maybe at several half price books and just like spend the weekend like kind of like pampering myself because I haven't done that in a very 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 long time so I've been too scared to go out into the world and I've just been really focused on school and work obviously so um I was just really looking forward to that but a couple days after my birthday, my grandma is getting surgery and my mom is going to be taking care of her and helping her through all of that. And it would be too dangerous and it'd be so selfish of me to go home right now because I would not want to risk my grandmother's life for more than doing things on my birthday. Like, of course not. I was just really sad because I'm gonna be alone <laughs> in my room my whole birthday. So <laughs> that's what's going to be happening. By the time my birthday comes around this week, I'm gonna have like the bottom of the barrel stuff in my pantry. So I won't like eat anything I want. I don't even know if I have enough ingredients, ingredients to make myself a cake or something. I know these are all superficial things. I was just really looking forward to it and my hopes are kind of lowered. But as my mom has told me, it's only a day. We can celebrate it the next weekend, which I'm very excited for still. I will be spending my 22nd birthday alone, <laughs> but it's okay. Things happen, I just am very grateful that I, I don't feel sick and I don't have it. And I'm grateful that I can go to classes online and professors are allowing that at the moment. And then I'm able to safely do stuff at home, work from home. I have food in my pantry, like I'm very grateful for what I do have. So <laughs> needless to say, it's gonna be a very strange week going forward. <laughs> um, anyway, I thought I would wrap up this reading vlog, obviously. I thought at the end of this, I'd wrap up my summer fling readathon because today is the 31st. It is the last day of the readathon. I don't plan on finishing like anything else today. I started a book for the readathon, 
but it's so big that I know I'm not gonna finish it by the end of the day. I thought I would go through the prompt board and let you know what books I read that completed the challenge. I'm just gonna be telling you the book name, the author, and what challenge it completed, and you can know my star ratings or summaries for these books in my August wrap-up whenever I post that. So the first book that I read was Riker by Jerry Glenn, and this was for the prompt of Dark and Dangerous. Then I read for Down Home Country, I read Tangled Up in Christmas by Lisa Renee Jones. For the prompt of diversity, I read The Beast by Katie Robert. For Big City Life, I read Neanderthal Marries Human by Penny Reed. For Sweet and Clean, you saw me cry and read um, If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. For Disability Rap, I read The Madness of Lordy and Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. For Author of Color, I read Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. For Road Trip, I'm actually currently reading that book. It is Breath of Fire by Amanda Boucher. And this is a fantasy romance where there is a road trip aspect in it, but I'm only on page 73, 72. So I read up to there or listened to that much last night before bed. For Old School Historical, I ended up reading Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas. For Hot and Spicy, I ended up not finishing that one or even starting it. It was Beautiful Player, I think, by Christina Lauren. I got the audiobook in from the library. I just didn't have enough time to listen to it, unfortunately. Hopefully I will listen to it though in the next couple of days. For Friends to Lovers, I also didn't finish this one. I got to maybe page 50 something. I don't even remember the title of it or the author, um, but here's the picture of it. And then lastly, for Category Romance, I ended up reading After Hours Seduction by Janice Maynard. I also forgot to mention that I finished Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. <laughs> it's on my bed somewhere. I just took a bunch of book pictures, but I did end up finishing that in this reading vlog. Five out of five stars for me. I adore this series so much. It's one of the like series I read in middle school that really 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 developed my love for reading. Again I read it with Deja, we've been talking about it. It's her favorite book in the series and I can totally see why. For some reason I thought that book number two was my least favorite in the series. I like this one way more than Cinder, like even more. Both of them are five stars but I like this one even more than Cinder. So it just keeps getting better for me. Crest is my favorite book in the entire series so <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading that in September um, and hopefully Deja and I will get to that in September as well. I had so much fun reading it with her, buddy reading it with her, but yeah I wanted to mention that also because um, I did read that book. <laughs> Again if you want to know my overall thoughts and star ratings for all these books be sure to watch out for my August wrap up which I don't know when that's getting filmed. I've pre-filmed one video which will be up this Saturday. Other than that I don't have any other videos filmed. I don't know if I will end up getting sick or will feel up to filming anymore so I guess just be patient and if I don't have a video up next Wednesday <laughs> like it there's something that happened or I was just not feeling it so I love you all very very much thank you for watching this kind of chaotic kind of depressing vlog <laughs> but anyways please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to how did your summer fling readathon go I am so very grateful that Sarah asked me to co-host this readathon with them. I loved um, how this readathon really helped me um, with my TBR and reading books I really wanted to read but just hadn't gotten the chance to yet. So again, thanks Sarah for everything and all the other co-hosts. I love all of y'all. But yes, I'm going to sign off here. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!